Hello Crafters, I'm Jen B and I'm an independent Stamping Up demonstrator. Today I'd like to show you how I made this card. I'm going to change the colour scheme and this one is Knight of Navy and I'm going to use um, Elegant Eggplant. So to start off with the card pieces you're going to need. Um, this is our shimmery white paper, uh, cardstock rather, and it measures eight and a quarter inches by five and three quarter inches, scored and folded at four and one eighths. This in centimetres is 21 by 14.5 centimetres, scored and folded at 10.5. And then a layer of elegant eggplant, and this measures four inches by five and five eighths inches, which is 10.25 by 14.25 centimetres a top layer of shimmery white and this measures three and seven eighths by five and a half inches which is ten by fourteen centimeters and then you need a piece for the star and also for the sentiment and the minimum that these should be is for the star it should be a minimum of four inches by three and a half inches which is 10.25 by 9 centimetres. This is a lot bigger than that. And then for the sentiment, <coughs> excuse me, you need a piece that's 4 inches by 1 inch, which is 10.25 by 2.5 centimetres. So the first thing I'm going to do is the embossing. So I'll start with the elegant eggplant first. And I'm going to go over both pieces with my embossing buddy. I know this may leave a little bit of white powder showing, um, but once the card is put together, I don't think it shows very much. Certainly not enough to not use it. Um, it certainly does more good than um, Spore's card. For the star, I'm using the Star of Light stamp set. This one here and I'm going to be using this star. The um, stamps that you see on here, the images and the sentiments, these are 70, shown at 70% of their actual size. Uh, because there's so many of them in here, um, stamping up have to make them smaller um, than they normally do with their stamp sets. Normally it's life size on the front. So this is the stamp and I'm going to ink it up with Versamark. And stamp that. I'm going to move it off to the side a little bit. There we go. Just make sure you get a really good impression. <clears throat> I've got a little bit of a tickle in my throat at the moment. Oh, that looks lovely. Move that to one side. Change my stamp over to my sentiment. I saw I didn't show you that on here, did I? Um, the one that I'm using is Star of Wonder, Star of Night. So I'm inking this up nicely with my Versamark. The fact that my Versamark pad is really quite dirty, um, it doesn't matter, it doesn't spoil the efficiency of the Versamark. In fact when you're doing white paper it's quite handy because you can normally see what it is that you've stamped. Right, good impression there. So I'm going to use white embossing powder on here. And because I have a big box I can dunk this in here. There we go, that looks nice. Yes, that's good. 
and then with the star, that's a little bit tight in there. Let's see, can I do it? Yes, I think so. Yes, I don't think it's stopped it going anywhere. I'll give it a second go just to make sure. Yep, that's good. So I'll put that one away. And then on this piece, I'm going to do the starburst or sunburst, not quite sure, um, or if it's the moon, but it's definitely light showing behind my star. So again, with my embossing buddy. And the stamp that I'm using for here is from Kinda Eclectic, and it's this big one here. Again, ink that up with Versa Mark. And this just needs to be so the top rays are approximately three quarters of an inch from the top. Now, without getting my head right forward, I can't see where I'm going here, so I'm on a wing and a prayer. I can't be too far out. <laughs> she says very, very hopefully. Right, give it a good press, making sure I do all the way round. The centre doesn't matter too much because that's going to be covered up. There we go. Oh, that's a good place. Yep. Could have done with it a little bit lower, but no, that's fine. Now I'm going to use my silver embossing powder. Beautiful. Just going to pop this back into my little jar. Put that rest there. And then I'm going to bring my heat tool in. Oh no, look what I've done. <gasps> I've put my um, sunburst on top of my star. Hmm. Doesn't look as if I've done any damage there. That was a bit silly, wasn't it? Right. So it's going to be a little bit noisy just for a short while while I do this heat embossing. Let's spread these out a bit. Let's do the star first. fails to fascinate me how embossing powder turns so quickly. 
Right, I'm going to bring my um, Big Shot up so I can do my die cutting now. For the star, I'm going to use the Starlight Thinlets. And I'm just going to use this one here. And if you watch any of my other videos, you know that I've been doing this on the back of all my uh, packets of dies. Um, so that's for the star and also for the sentiment I'm going to use this one here with the two points on it which is from the Project Life Cards and Labels framelits and again that's another one where I've done the back of it. So this is the one I'm using. So that's, in fact what I'm doing, I'm going to put that across straight because I tend to struggle with straight lines. And I get a much better view this way. I think that looks okay. And then for the star, I'm going to put it upside down. Just line all the points on the embossed star, line them all up with the points in the die. There we go, I think that looks good. And then just run that through. Okay, so I have the sentiment. Let's hold on to that piece. And then we have the star. Beautiful. I love this set. Now I can put the big shot away. And then all we really need to do is to put the card together. So I'll use Tombow as always. I think that's a full one. For this you can use your preference, whether it's snail, false views, um, tear and tape. Tombow is my favourite. There we go, that's that one. Now I'm going to put the sunburst on. Yes, do you see that where I had a go previously and uh, I wasn't quite happy with it. There we go. Now I'm going to pop these up on dimensionals. So if I do the star first. I'll use four pointing up to the big points first of all. And then I'm going to cut some in half go on the smaller parts. So if I just cut these little bits here. So that one. 
can go in there. These ones I'm going to cut in half so that I can, the smaller they are obviously, the closer I can get to the points. It probably doesn't need as much of this, but I'd rather put too much than not enough on. I always feel that, you know, you go to the trouble of making a nice card and um, you don't want it spoiled for the lack of dimensional. not sure that that should have worked out uneven like that. Let's turn that round that way point going upwards. There we go. Right, last one. Now, make sure you don't put it on upside down. One side is slightly longer than the other. Right, I'm going to have to hold my card up to do this. What I'm trying to do is to make sure that this is in a straight line and that that is as well. I'm not sure it is. Let's see check with the lines on my grid paper. Mm, that looks okay. And that's just coming above that one. Uh, yep, it looks as if it's probably okay. Okay, so there's that one. And then my sentiment. It should be a lot easier to do. Except I'm running out of these big ones. Let's see if I've got enough just... Oops, no, that's broken. Um, got another one here. I'm not going to argue with that one. Not on video anyway. There we go, that's that. Again, I'm going to hold my card up. straight. Maybe not. That was better. Right, now I'm just going to put some rhinestones on. Let's get rid of all the uh, little bits of shrapnel there. Um, right, I put, I think I counted a total of 19 on this card. Well, I'm not going to do that all on video. Um, I know you'll fall asleep watching this. It's like watching paint dry, isn't it? Right, so I'll put the two on the sentiment. Because that little design there calls out for rhinestones to be on them. Let's have a nice big one in the center there and then these medium sized ones I'll just do it in the points in fact no come down a bit what did I do here yes I did come down a bit more 
and then I'm going to do the same on the four big points just come down a little way I don't normally like using rhinestones as you probably know but they really come into their own on something like this if I'm doing flowers I prefer pearls but I love rhinestones here there we go I will put the rest of the rhinestones on later but uh, you don't really want to watch me do you right there we go there's today's card many thanks for watching my video if you have any questions please leave a comment in the box below or send me an email to jambi at jambicards.com if you'd like to purchase any of the products that I've featured here today um, you'll find a shop now button on my blog which is www.jambicards.com or you can click on the link that's in the box below now that I've sussed out how to actually make them into links um, if you would um, no, if you enjoyed my video please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button and finally the reason I'm struggling here is I don't have my um, screen in front of me and every time I'm checking looking making sure I'm still in camera I'm having to bend backwards to look on the screen on my little camcorder up here um, I'm finding it very very distracting um, anyway uh, finally I will leave all the measurements and the products that I've used on the screen. If you're watching on a device where you can't see those details, check in the box below because I will put them all down there. Many thanks for joining me today. Until next time, happy crafting. Cheerio.